the elevations on the west uh, facing the street. You can see the, all the glass for the storefront facing the street. You can see the three street trees that have been proposed for the right of way improvements. In uh, following up conversations, you can see the roof screen up above. Um, uh, on the north elevation, you can see the differentiation of the facade, uh, the integration of the zinc uh, materials to uh, uh, accentuate that east end of the building. Uh, the changing of the ground floor to accommodate those doors, uh, the trash doors, the egress doors, uh, and then the integration of that stair tower, uh, the stair facade, and that uh, rooftop element to kind of uh, assist with breaking up that north facade. Um, the bollards are uh, against the property line on the north facade that extend down uh, uh, two thirds of the north elevation. Excuse me. Uh, oops, I missed some elevations here, sorry. Uh, on the cemetery side, you can see pulling back to 10 feet. Um, we've proposed and have shown trees uh, planted along that side with the red twig dogwoods on the ground. Uh, the grading is higher to be more close to the existing cemetery sidewalk, uh, the existing cemetery grading on the cemetery side. Um, on the south side down below, you can see the, the trees on that south side. You can see the, the residential units on the east side of the south elevation. Um, solar panels, uh, roof screen, and generator penthouse up above um, have uh, updated the renderings uh, to show the streetscape improvements as proposed, uh, pavers as we've used before, uh, the granite bollards per the town design guidelines, the round tree wells, uh, tree grates per design guidelines. It's the same manufacturer round instead of square. Uh, the bicycle hoops uh, per design guidelines, the Pacifica bench that we've used uh, north uh, at the um, uh, uh, one East Pleasant um, to uh, allow for some um, seating out in the town right of way. Um, and um, uh, the only other thing are the tree guards that go with the tree grates to give a bit more protection to the street trees than they've had in the past. Um, upgrade, I think that's up, that's it on that elevation. Again, you can, you can see the trees going down the south side, the integrated, um, uh, streetscape. Here's the updated rendering. It just, you know, the only change is the tree. South side is very similar to what you've seen in the past. The north side is very similar to the scene, what you've seen in the past. Um, and then the change here is the corrugated metal roof screen. So the materiality of that roof screen is to be corrugated with a cap um, and uh, a silver color that will uh, integrate with the, um, the rooftop equipment. Um, I've got a landscape plan that I will show you briefly. Um, uh, that shows similar, um, got rid of the propane tank. Uh, the intent is to go all electric with the building except for the generator, which will be fed by an existing gas line. Um, the streetscape improvements are shadowed here. They're shown more on L2.0. Uh, the ground floor plan is, is uh, uh, unchanged except for the fact that we've got obviously the, the shift in, uh, that you've seen on the architecturals with the residential down on the ground floor and the slightly larger retail along the street. Uh, L2 shows the, street, the streetscape improvements specifically um, outside of the bounds of our property. They show the granite bollard, uh, the Jeunesse concrete pavers we used before, the Pacifica bench, the bicycle loops, the tree grates, and the tree guards. Um, and those are all integrated with the uh, crosswalk that we've shown in the past that works with the underground Eversource utility infrastructure that is on the west side of the street, uh, Kendrick Park. Um, I've also got two renderings here that um, have been done that were requested. Uh, this is the first one from the dentist parking lot, <laughs> as I'm calling it, which is a step back so we could get a little more of the of the screen. Um, we've shown that with the Jones building in the foreground. Um, uh, you can at this point on Triangle Street, you'll be able to get around the trees in the cemetery and be able to see the building. Um, we're proposing to keep the trees on the north side of that. Um, uh, uh, 15 East Pleasant. So those will remain um, as you can see there. Um, and that is the gate from Triangle Street. And the last elevation rendering is from the north of the bike share. Uh, north of the bike share is the north elevation. So you can see the building relative to one East Pleasant. You can see it relative to the bank. Uh, the streetscape improvements have been, we've done the best we can to kind of show those uh, as they would um, be between the sidewalk and the curb. 
Uh, that north elevation, you can see the materiality shifting at the west side, uh, east side of the building. Um, and you can see it relative to the bank and uh, one East Pleasant, which would be there. And then I think I will go back to the architectural plans and start with questions. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. So are there questions that we would like to present to Kyle now before we go uh, back to uh, the design standards and address uh, specifics as we go through the process. Catherine, if you may, I just wanted to point out if if um, board members and members of the public might be wondering, I, I haven't seen these revisions. Um, these revisions oh, okay. were submitted today. And so right. um, they, they have not been um, uploaded to the town calendar posting okay. or, or the okay. website. Just, I wanted to clarify that. Sure, thank you. Okay. And, and I, I would also like to say that the, the, the layout of the building hasn't changed. I just tried to today submit the updated streetscape uh, improvements that were requested and the updated um, uh, renderings that were requested. Okay, good. All right. So, uh, board members, do you have comments or questions for Kyle related to this recent uh, update or um, any of the proposed, uh, any of our proposals prior uh, to this meeting? which I don't know that you necessarily, did you address all of those, Kyle? I don't have the, uh, or Maureen, did they, did, were all of our uh, previous uh, concerns addressed? Uh, if you give me one moment, let okay. me go through my list here. So, okay, so I'll, we'll just go one by one. How about all that? Right. Um, so the first one, uh, detailed rendering, drawings that address the east building facade as well as the fence, trees, and slope along the rear easterly property line, which abuts uh, West Cemetery. Okay. Um, uh, Kyle, uh, did you want to speak to that? Uh, yes, uh, I think that what we've done since is, sh is um, uh, you know, pull the building back the, ten, the full 10 feet. Um, a rendering showing the grading back there is um, I think that, I think the intent to, to answer that was to, uh, show it in the rendering, uh, that we submitted on this North facade to show this, to show it relative to the street and the public way relative to the cemetery itself. Um, is there a, is, would the request be to have a a rendering from this location, from closer in on the cemetery? I don't know that we needed a rendering more. Uh, your, uh, did you? Uh, I believe uh, Mr. Right. Tom has raised his hand. Oh, okay, go ahead. Tom. Yeah, no, I just had a quick comment. Um, am I on mute? Yeah. Um, that we, we do have photographs of your intent in terms of the negotiations you had about the trees on the back end of the property and how you're going to make those revisions to the fence. And so I think we do have a document that shows some of those things. Um, I don't know if people want to um, hear from Kyle in terms of what those discussions were, but we did hear that at the planning board. So I'm not sure if the design review yeah. board heard that. I could I could recount that if that would be helpful. Um, we, we talked, there's a, the historical commission um, talked about plantings on one side or the other of the fence. Uh, we discussed at the planning board that we'd like to plant the um, plant plants on our property on our side, um, and that we were open to uh, moving the fence if need be. And we would, you know, the conversation we had about the streetscape improvements as well, that we would defer to Alan Snow, the tree warden on this, whether or not he wanted to move the uh, fence or not move the fence. Um, so uh, we still think that it's best to put trees on our side. Um, of the property, the historical commission felt a little bit differently, but it wasn't a mandate. And I think the planning board, uh, you know, that, that remains an, an open issue. Okay. I have to say that at the historical 
commission meeting, we talked with you in detail about that, about moving the fence and about the fact that it would be better to have the trees on the town side so we could maintain them. And so they'd have more room to grow out into the cemetery space, as well as across the fence, um, you know, over the, the setback. If you put them on your side and we put some on the cemetery side for shade, there they might grow together, they'll be too close. And you actually agreed, although I haven't seen it in writing anywhere, with me when I asked if you'd be willing to defray the expense of the town putting in new trees. Um, now, suddenly you're saying you really want them on your side. I don't really see the point of that. If the fence is going to be moved to the west, there's more room for trees on our property. But since you're taking a bunch of ours down, um, it would be nice if you'd help the town put new ones on the cemetery. Those are shade trees. Those are integral to the look of that particular area of the cemetery. And I don't think that will be accomplished by having them right up next to your building. Well, uh, we, as we said with the historical commission, we would, we continue to be, to have the position that we would support putting trees on the town property. And if the town wanted us to pay for that, we would do that. I think that the historical commission proposed something different than our drawings. Um, discussed whether or not trees could, you know, should be on one side of the fence, on the other side of the fence, or on both sides of the fence. And as I made, as I tried to make clear at the historical commission, we would defer to Alan Snow. If Alan Snow said, hey, look, if these trees grow up, they're going to come into each other, it'll be a problem. We would defer and, 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 and go with Alan. If Alan said it would be fine if we had trees on both sides of this fence, and I see no problem with it, that would be fine. If the town decided in six months not to put any trees on the town side, that would also be fine with us. Um, if the town wants Alan? us, to, I'm sorry. Did you consult with Alan to ask him what, so you could put that into your later renderings? I, I have reached out to Alan. I do not have a final uh, decision that, that meets the, uh, meets all of the people who are looking at this. Everybody's, you know, everybody's got, if everybody's deferring to Alan, I think that's pretty easy to work with. We are not trying to get away from paying for anything, Jan, as we've hopefully made clear at the historical commission and with the the streetscape improvements we've okay. we've shown. Okay. Um, okay. So as I'm sort of writing notes here, so um, I'll type in that as a suggest as a suggested recommendation um, about. Well, I, well we I, could I, actually wait because we we're going to yeah. discuss that under one oh. of the design standards. So it may come that we will provide a formal recommendation for sure, that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And That's and I would think as as the applicant. Obviously, we're we, we've shown a rendered elevation. We've shown this. We've shown this rendering. We've expressed willingness to fit, you know, financially support moving of the fence, planting trees on town property. We pulled the building back ten feet from our side to plant to be able to plant trees on our property. We want to be able to proceed with the project. We want to be able to make everybody happy, and we're trying to be able to manage that in a procedural manner that allows the project to uh, uh, move forward. Okay. Okay. Any other? Uh... Uh, on that marine on that list that we uh, should sure yeah i'm just going to read them aloud okay. um, so the second one is uh the board had requested a rendering drawing of the proposed development from triangle street roundabout and from prey street at eye level did we get that so that's that's the other rendering okay yep. um that's from north of bike share and i'll i'll tell you that I, I went further up from Triangle Street. I have images of those photos. There are a lot of trees from the Kendrick side that obscure the building. Um, the spoke building, there's a street tree north of the spoke building that really starts to obscure the building. So I went further south to show more of the building. Okay. Anybody have any concerns about that? If not, we can go on. What's the next one, Maureen? Um, um, yep. Um, the next one is uh, to provide a photometric plan. Did we get that? Uh... I don't believe the photometric plan has been updated for the um, to reflect the residential on the ground floor okay. and the affordable housing. Okay. Um, the next one is the board requested for construction details for proposed site furniture for the site exterior. Which I believe we've done with that L2 plan. Okay. Yeah, I think we might have something there. Okay. 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 All right. Um, sorry, bear with me. I'm also writing notes here. 
Um, the next one would whoop, the next one would whoop, sorry. Next one would be uh, the board asked for construction details for uh, proposed signage. I think we've we've sought a waiver for that. Yep. And the I think the last one is uh, the board asked for updated renderings showing the maximum screening uh, to be provided for the roof equipment and mechanicals. And I think we try to show that in these in in the elevate in all the updated renderings that you've seen. Could you do that then, one more time? Uh, I think we've. Uh, I think the, the question was, are we going to change the roof screen as we've drawn on the renderings to accommodate the roof equipment? We have not raised the roof screen. We have not raised the parapet. We have enclosed the generator with a rooftop unit to also try to assist with the north facade um, and have clarified the materiality of that roof screen shown here. Okay. All right. Is that it, Maureen? It is. Okay, all right, then I'm gonna ask the board if you have any further questions at this time for Kyle. Uh, if not, then uh, I think it would be appropriate for us to begin the review using the uh, design review principles and standards. Um, I'm not hearing any, but if you, have, if you have other comments, put your hand up now. Okay. I think we can save our comments until after we've had our review. Right? Sure. Okay. Everybody yeah. Probably has a list of this. Okay. Point. Very good. All right. Then uh, I'm going to begin. <clears throat> As uh, the public may know or may not know, we are working from a set of uh, review standards. As I mentioned, they came from 1983, um, and. I think we owe it to ourselves as a board and to the developer and to the town to uh, go thoroughly through each one. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna propose that we uh, come up with a recommendation or uh, some specific related to each one rather than put it all together in one big recommendation. Uh, keep things clear. And there is some redundancy. Uh, it's hard to be sure, it's hard to keep comments from flowing into another um, standard, but we'll do our best here. <clears throat> okay, the first one we're going to uh, um, review is height of the building. The height of any proposed alteration should be compatible with the style and character of the building, structure, or the site being altered, and that of the surroundings. So that's, this is our chance now to discuss the height of the building. And right, can you put those up on the screen? Can you take that control and put Do you want me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, thought you would like me to do that? Um, I can I, was, I can do it also if you just okay. want to tell me where to go. I no. mean, if we're going to do the review standards, it'd be nice to be looking at them as we go. Sure. Oh, uh, anybody? Um, Chris, I don't know. Um, I don't know if Chris Brestrup has uh, a copy of the project application report handy. If you could show them, I'm also typing notes, so I, I don't Why want don't? to be. I don't want to be distracting to everyone. I don't. Oh. I'm at home, and I don't have that. Okay. Sorry. Kyle, do you have the project application report? I also can write notes by hand, so okay. that's fine too. All right. It's I'll, in I'll... the documents that you have uploaded for the meeting. Yep, very true. Okay, okay. all right. So, so we're, gonna, we're, we're going to discuss height of building and um, uh, there is some, uh, some comment about um, also seeing if it's suitable within showing heights for surrounding properties located at least 500 feet from the proposed development. Okay, there you go. That's exactly what I have. So um, now's your chance to um, discuss the height. Uh, this is a little interesting because um, of the fact that we already have a building hard by it on the south side. So uh, from that perspective, the height of those two, two buildings is the same. When you look the other way, 
the building and the buildings uh, to the north of this building are not compatible, or I should say this building is not compatible with the buildings to the north. But uh, this is something I think we should discuss and um, offer any suggestions or recommendations we can. So I'd like the board to uh, make their comments or uh, if you feel this is an appropriate height, uh, then that's what we can uh, indicate. Catherine, do you intend to call on us in well, general? Well, unless I see your function? hand. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, okay, go ahead, Erica, yeah. All right. So um, I made some written notes, so I'm just gonna read sure. what I wrote. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the first thing I'd like to say is that I totally respect the charge of the design review board to address each of these issues, but you know, as a after a couple of days, uh, decades of practicing uh, architecture design and education, I it I find it difficult to tease them apart as independent considerations. So, as you mentioned, I think there will be a lot of overlap. Yeah, um, right. One of the strengths of any well-designed building is that an integrated design. Um, that uses its architectural language efficiently to address the multiple demands of its interior program of spaces and conditions of its external context, be it physical, historic, or cultural, as well as immediate and regional scales. So for the height of this building, I think that the 57 foot height is compatible with the building type and structural system. Um, that's a response to the, the charge in the design review guidelines. It's compatible with its surroundings, both in the immediate sense, there are other similar height buildings and building elements, such as a church steeple immediately adjacent and within eyeshot, as well as buildings of similar height closer to the main intersection of town. The building height here also mirrors the height of the mature trees across the street in Kendrick Park. As is consistent with the master plan, we see infill density in the downtown area and Amherst zoning permits the height of this building um, well, there are also lower height buildings in the neighborhood, um, additional development on adjacent sites to the north is likely in the coming years. And most of this stretch of East Pleasant Street to the north of the site is currently characterized by a sea of pavement. The two and a half story gable roof buildings across the park are far enough away not to be diminished. I feel that it's sensible to see these similar height buildings clustered together in an urban gesture across the street from the park so that they don't create a canyon-like effect. This is a similar condition to the Hastings block of South Pleasant Street across from Town Common. The building here is contributing to a pattern of low, high, low, high as one moves from one end of the streetscape to the other. And any building, regardless of its height, will cast shadow on the sidewalk. In the case of this particular site, it happens in the morning. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm looking at uh, Jan, or I don't, uh, or Tom, or Lindsay. Other comments? I'm not hearing any. Anybody want to speak up on this? Tom, I, I'll just I'll just jump in. I think okay. that um, you know I I think that the, that we're in a, a challenging condition here because of exactly the point that Erica brought up and I'm sure that everybody can see very clearly that um, this has not been, you know, this is a part of town that has not been maximized in terms of what the prior height limitations were, um, nor what they are now. And so we're in this transitional st state where we're trying to increase the density to meet the housing needs, et cetera, of, of our town. And so there's a pretty stark shift from where we've been to where we're, where we're going essentially. Um, and there's, there's many ways to do that, right? There's full maxim, maximizing of, of what we are capable of, which I think this building more or less does. And from a development standpoint, that makes sense. From, um, you know, from a from a resident standpoint, it's a difficult leap to make. You know, and I can definitely sympathize with people who are seeing this as a a huge transition um, because it's it's very evident from from the north side um, that 
you know, we're, we're making a big jump here. Even that rendering from, from the Jones, uh, from that parking lot, looking at the Jones building, um, you know, it's a big transition, both architecturally from just the style to the height. And I think that over time, it will start to knit together. Um, that's my assumption that, you know, the People's Bank and the pub parking lot and all of that area that's that's currently so low and creating such a stark transition will start to build up and we'll start to see more of a more of like that city block that Erica was describing where Hastings is and we'll start it'll start to feel more integrated into the downtown fabric but right now it feels it feels very um it feels out of place with the exception of the building that's that's right next door so um, I think just from an architectural standpoint, what would help this is if, and, I, and I'm, I'm not making a suggestion here because I think it would be too, too massive of a change, but I think that, you know, if I were to just come in from the beginning of this project, I think what would help is doing some kind of stepping to create less of a a maximized volume in terms of area and something that can really start to kind of step down um, in scale to create more of a relationship to what's currently there or even other forms that might go there or go next door over time. And so it would, it would be nice if this building in terms of height and, and I guess <laughs> all of the other components, but especially proportion coming up next if this building could have some um, aspects, some some elements of it that stepped in terms of its its height, so that it's not just such a massive block that is in such contrast with where we've been. Um, and I don't think that I'm making necessarily a recommendation at this point, but I think that that's my response to looking at this building with respect to height. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tom, would you like to weigh in? Um, sure. I mean, um, my comments are going to sort of, um, I think, echo uh, Erica, which I, I think um, she did a great job of kind of outlining the various different um, reasons why a building maximized on this site, both you know structurally and from its particular function, is is um, seems like the right answer. And and you know, I had some concerns last time because of that facade. Um, I think my, my, I, I had to think about it a lot in terms of how people think about our urban downtown. And if we go back to the Main Street North Pleasant intersection, we have very tall buildings, shorter sidewalks um, uh, between curb and building. We have um, an urban park across the street. And I start to see an opportunity to mimic that um, experience further down the street in the sense that buildings of the scale of the spoke is not what we want, but buildings with a kind of urban, um, a more urban scale is something, no, I don't, urban's the wrong word, um, a more um, populated, dense and active space as opposed to lower scale, buildings surrounded by parking. So um, in terms of direction, I feel like the, the project is in a, a bad position because it's the end of the line of these buildings and not an infill between two other buildings. Um, but from, from my perspective, it marks um, you know, a progression towards the kind of scale we want to see in, in opposition to seas of parking and the spoke. So um, in terms of its context, when I think about the entire downtown as a whole, I see the height being on par with the expectations of what we want um, downtown and being on par with the other buildings that we see in the um, small town urban landscape that we have. Okay, good, thank you. Um, Jan, did you want to offer any comments before we make a recommendation on this? Um, I just would like to echo what Lindsay was saying. I'm still concerned about the west facade and the retail space and the setback in front of that. I feel like the height of one story 
over that entire space that's in front of the doors isn't enough and it it makes the facade taller by having all all the floors above it then um at one facing and i'm just i'm i'm just wondering if there's a way to lighten that area underneath so it's more welcoming so it feels more open there people have written to us and talked to us about you know crowding on the sidewalk feeling from these buildings i noticed that the second floor does reach out all the way to the sidewalk at that north um northwest corner so it's it's reaching really far and even though it's up overhead it's it's going to be at, you know obvious to people walking under it and I just don't know whether maybe it couldn't be two floors, um, uh, you know, open there, or um, as Lindsay said, stepping back more the entire um, west facade somehow to help alleviate the perception right now in Amherst among so many people that I hear from that um, it's it's going to be a, you know a dense infill, and it, it it is somewhat similar, Tom, to the area around the common, but it isn't. It's much higher, um, and there isn't as much differentiation between each of the buildings because they're wider, they're bigger. So, you know, I agree with you up to a point. I just don't think that it has some of the same sensibilities, uh, and certainly the um, retail spaces don't have the same uh, welcoming and open and close kind of um, appearance. Okay, thank you. Well, well, I would just echo, uh, I'm most uncomfortable when only talking about the height is the fact that it's the very abrupt, uh, this tall building, and then we have that little teeny weeny bank, and then the spoke and the Mexican restaurant, uh, which probably inevitably will be filled in, but for the time, for the time being, uh, we don't know what plans are there. And, uh, doesn't enhance the attractiveness of the, of the building itself because it's sort of there. And then we have this lower scape of buildings, not just the bank, but also that row of um, buildings that uh, circles around to Jones Realty. So um, it's high. I would prefer that it was lower and uh, but uh, it also, on the other hand, it it, it does abut next door uh, a five story building. So as far as the height is concerned, um, I would wish it were small, wish it were lower, but uh, I think we could make a recommendation or some vote on this. Would anybody be willing to uh, make a motion that we accept the height of the building and uh, and should we uh marine want to put in some of the sort of the maybe the significant concerns that come along with that can we do that sure so okay. uh well we let, let me if yeah we, go ahead i just want to understand what you're saying so are you asking the board to make uh make a motion and yes. vote on their finding think, yes. regarding the height so yes. i've heard a couple things um, such as perhaps uh, stepping the building height back, um, so lowering lowering the front facade, the west front facade facing East Pleasant Street. Um, I've heard um, Jan, uh, not Jan, sorry, Catherine Yushoff had 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 suggested um, uh, lowering the the building. Um, I don't know if you're referring to the whole building or stepping back. I was and more then, or less thinking, yes, but yeah. And I've also heard members say that they're fine with the building height. So uh, does the board want to take a vote on on your, on this finding and provide uh, a specific uh, suggestion to the planning board just on the height? Can I just well, clarify something really quick, Maureen? Are sure. we, is that the process that we're following to to make a recommendation and have a vote on each of these standards? That's what I was thinking. I thought it would be simpler to go through them rather than put them all in, you know, or we could combine them into one big vote. But I thought because things may be different as we move forward, it could get more confusing. 
So I was proposing a vote on each standard, but- uh, I'd rather see us discuss each one and wait to, to see- All right, the, fine, good. The Gesamtkunst back is at the end, because as Erica said, it's an integrated process. It and is. All these yeah, elements is. are relating okay. to each other. All right, good. Well, let's, then let's move on to uh, the next one, proportions. Proportions and relationships of height to width between windows, doors, signs, and other architectural elements should be compatible with the architectural style and character of the building or structure and that of the surroundings. So that brings us to um, one um, element uh, with the windows and um, I don't know, I offer my thoughts on this. I'm not sure, Kyle, if uh, the, no the north side changed very much when you added the, when you took away the parking garage. I, I'm not sure, uh, did you give us a rendering of the new north side? Um, uh, yes, we've got a rendered elevation and then we've got the two other renderings that okay. show With that north the, side. We that could really pick show, the, uh, the show the windows like, I'm not sure if this is a new one or an old one. The, the one that Maureen sent out on Friday is accurate. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. On that north elevation. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, my interpretation, and I may not be clear on this, is that uh, there are a lot of windows, um, and in some respects, it break it broke it breaks up that sort of the big wall to in one way, but um, it, I don't think it's the window struck placement is compatible with the building next to it. And I think that was one of the uh, considerations we were asked to make about this. So, um, and Kyle, while I'm thinking about it, Kyle, on your other buildings, you've, you have, I think wisely uh, had draperies or blinds on those. And now with all these windows, are you going to provide draperies and, or blinds on each one of these windows, the big ones, the little ones, all yes, of them? You all are. the same. Okay, all right, front and back. Okay, good. Because I have to say, I come down that way a lot and you didn't ask me to be the person who checked windows, but I'm always looking at your building, see if all the blinds are closed. <laughs> see who's <laughs> messy and who's clean. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's off the subject, but okay. So now we're talking about proportions. And um, I'd like to hear from the uh, board what you're uh, thinking about. Okay, I'll go with, did I see your hand up, Tom? I did not see your hand. Okay. No, but I, I'll comment. I mean, go I ahead. think, I think the, the um, in terms of proportion, I see a lot of continuity between obviously the previous archipelago building next door and this building. Um, and on the ground floor, I see um, similarity in terms of um, you know, stack height and proportion of the storefront glass with the, the solid material of the bank, um, especially looking at the new rendering provided by Kyle from um, Kendrick Park, where we're seeing the bank in the foreground and we see that continuity. So, I mean, in, in terms of its relationship, you know, the proportions of that glass to solid, um, given its adjacencies, um, the proportions feel um, appropriate. I mean, I think they're scattered somewhat on that north facade in terms of being irregular, but uh, from my perspective, that's the architecture and the, the dialogue between the solid and the void, um, or the proportions of the glass to the opaque seems, again, compatible proportionally with, with the other buildings in the area. Um, and, you know, always from an interior experience perspective, um, I think it's, you know, promising to have more glass, more views, more light. Um, and so um, from that perspective, I think um, it's appropriate. Okay. Any other uh, comments? Jan, do you have anything you'd like to add on this? Talking about proportions. I have no problem with the proportions. Okay. And I, uh, Erica? Yeah, I just, you'll have to forgive me because I, I prepared 
notes and trying to address like specifically what was in the design standards. So um, uh, our downtown is an eclectic mix of building style, size and materials and the portion proportions of this building are appropriate and reference the rhythm and pattern of apertures and shallow brick detailing in 19th century buildings nearby. This is a contemporary interpretation and is appreciated here in this traditional transitional lot between high and low and oldish and new. The design creates a first floor plinth, kind of a reverse plinth with a higher ceiling and increased openness at the street, which is suitable to commercial scale and it carries the height of the adjacent bank. It then stacks smaller scale openings above, which is appropriate. I feel that the use of um, materials, brick, wood, and zinc to create a variety um, shadow lines and patterns um, is nice. Um, the variety generated within a limited palette of window groupings is restrained but dynamic and emphasizes the horizontal axis, as do the horizontal reveals of each sill line. The generous windows project the residential program of the interior and serve to lighten the mass of the building. In addition, the cuts um, in plan at um, the East Pleasant Street sidewalk and on the north and south facades help to break down the overall length of the proportion into proportional segments. Um, my earlier concerns about the overwhelming gesture of the north facade elevation have been addressed by the creative use of materials and wall plane manipulation at the east end, which breaks down the 200 foot body of the building. Um, the zinc clad gash that separates the head from the body of the building is, in my opinion, still not significantly wide enough at only two, two feet seven inches on the upper floors. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lindsay, any comments? Um, you know, I actually think that the proportions are really nicely done. I think that, um, as I mentioned about the height, I think it, I think that there could have been some interesting moves to articulate kind of some different scales within the skin, um, peeling some portions out or bumping them or, you know, that, that it could integrate stepping in an interesting way. Um, but in terms of at least just, you know, addressing the, the fenestration and the, the window um, rhythm, I think that, I think it's really, it's come a long way from last time. Um, I appreciate the, um, the integration of the zinc and the, 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 while it does relate strongly to the building that Archipelago did next door, um, I think that it's, you know, it, it's different enough. Um, in some ways, there there are a lot of nuances that that are creative, and you know, there's a similar, um, you know, certainly a similar scale um, to this building. But I think that the use of materials and the kind of window patterning is unique um, with respect to you know the building next door to it. So I, th I think it's done. I think it's I think it was done well. Um, and also, I I could imagine some some interesting ways to articulate the skin with respect to proportion that I'm not seeing specifically on the north side. Um, again, it's probably a little late in the game to to suggest that, <laughs> but um, just from a design standpoint, I think that there may be some other ways to um, break that down uh, and keep the density that you have. Okay. All right. Any other comments? If not, we'll move on to relation of structures and space, which seems to be a very important topic for people. Um, so um, this really relates to, uh, let me see, I've got my you know, the outdoor plaza concept, I believe, uh, as one of the things that probably needs to be flushed out. Um, the renderings give the impression that, that this area, quote, the plaza is very big, but I'm not convinced that the renderings are accurate um, as to what, to the size, particularly in front of this new building would be. And also there were some concerns about pavement. I think that probably could fall in here. 
um, you've you've done some uh, some revisions of the landscaping, which gives a better impression for the front. But um, what exactly are Kyle? Are you all thinking about as this quote plaza? This um, how big is it going to be? I mean, <laughs> Uh, what's going to be there? They're going to be benches. Uh, people want benches. People want this. People want that. Um, what realistically can we assume we could expect to see there? How did? How? What was your? What was your vision of that uh, particular space? Sure, uh, Maureen. Is there any way to show the rendering from above that shows the south side and the streetscape improvement? Please. Sure. Uh, let me uh, pull up uh, what you sent earlier today. Thank you. Um, bear with me. Uh, let's see here. Today's the nineteenth. Architectural, should I, uh, architectural rendering or landscape? Street architectural, street. please. Architectural, please. Yep. Okay, hold on. A second. And it's at the back end. It's probably the. Okay, hold on. Plate twelve or thirteen. Okay, I'm just gonna pull this up. Thank Pull you. Pull this up. Uh, 12, you said something like that? Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. So in terms of scale, yeah. right, this is this model, this is the Revit model that the, the basis of this rendering is the Revit model that the building would be built off of. So the, mo the model is, is the building. Um, uh, it represents the dimension from the one East Pleasant property line accurately, accurately. It represents the dimension from the North property line accurately, the East and the West. So this space that is uh, at the ground floor in front of the retail that is open um, goes from the sidewalk on the North side to a much larger dimension on at the, at the end of the triangle on the South side before it turns into an eight foot walkway that walks down to the leasing office, the entrance to the residential uh, and everything else. Um, it is, there are uh, granite wall site walls, the first of which butts all the way to the street and is the site, is the height of a seat, the height of a bench. So there's seating available under cover, uh, you know, at that location um, for that, that public space that we've tried to do a whole bunch of things in that area, right? We've tried to bring all the non-residential as forward as we can, push the residential far back as we can. We obviously have to maintain egress. We also wanna integrate some plantings on the north side so it can't all just be pavers. Um, and then obviously have to accommodate um, at least a 60 foot building up above to have, have residential. And then what we've shown here is the spaces out front, again, which are all accurate um, from the sidewalk to the curb, the existing curb line, those round tree guards, the, tr the tree grates, uh, the benches that are the same, you know, a uh, Landform Pacifica bench that we've in installed 100 feet south of here. Um, so have tried to accurately show exactly what that space would look like, which, which hopefully this, this rendering does. Okay. Well, one of your renderings showed, uh, and this, so we're going to accept this as the, the official one, showed um, the pavement from the building to the south blending and with matching up with the pavement to this new building and it looked like a huge big plaza. And uh, I, I think you have changed the pavers. You're not gonna have the same paver from one building to the other. Is that correct? Or am I getting confused on it that? Is, it is the same paver. The okay. paver on One East Pleasant is uh, 24 by 32, if I'm correct. Okay. The paver on 11 East Pleasant is the exact same manufacturer, the same paver, same okay. spec, uh, 18 by 24. Okay, but the this is on the, as I'm looking at the photo on facing uh, on the right here, um, that's the driveway. So you're not going to, there was one rendering that looked like everything was one big plaza, but this is actually a driveway to the garage. And it looks like you've separated that so it, uh, that no longer uh, op gives that same impression. Am I yeah, correct? Yeah, if we were unclear, what's one East Pleasant and what's 11 East Pleasant in the past, yeah. I apologize. That's all one East Pleasant, that's all in place. There's no change to any of that. That's egress, that's circulation. Yeah, okay. So we no so intent to gonna, change yeah, one Nobody's East gonna stand there and think they're gonna put a bench because the car is gonna drive in, okay. There's gonna be a bench right on the north side of that 
uh, landscape area and there's two right. benches out okay. in the right of way. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, that takes care of my, how about the rest of you have questions about this? Erica, did you have notes on that? I do. <laughs> okay, yes. carry on. Um, okay, um, so I think a particularly strong move here is recessing the first floor retail space to create a generous extension of the sidewalk at the west side of the property. This pushing back receives the line uh, receives the line of Halleck Street and creates a plaza space for gathering in front of the building, which could be used for sidewalk sales, seating, um, etc. The new crosswork is appreciated here as well. Well, I like the gesture of creating an extension of the sidewalk. I think that the 424 square foot plaza space does feel small given the use and density of this building. And I would again call for an extension of the plaza to the south into what is now the planted area kind of closer to the property line and maybe moving that granite site wall back. Um, on the south side, I think the building is well situated and makes the most of the setback space and creates a visual link from Halleck Street to the cemetery. Um, it will be planted and will also create a soft buffer between the adjacent one East Pleasant Street property for those apartments. Um, I feel like the north side of the building, you know, with just now five feet, I don't know how you could plant that um, efficiently, effectively to kind of soften that, that buffer edge. Certainly not enough space to plant a tree adjacent to the building there. So um, I'd be curious about what others have to say. But overall, I think the solid void relationship of the individual um, facades is well composed and dynamic. And I think that the solid void relationship of the building to um, the site is also uh, nicely done. Okay. Um, Lindsay or Jan, any comments? Or Tom? <laughs> okay, Tom has none. I do. I just. I'll just add that I do yeah. appreciate a lot of the gestures that have been made with the, um, with the outdoor space. I think the paving is is especially well done with the with the kind of two different sizes of pavers, um, the orientation, and I think there's a lot of, like like I said about the fenestration. I just think there's a lot of nuance that, um, is subtle but but really well, well thought through. I know we're not talking about officially landscaping, but I wanted to ask you, Kyle, there's an island right there now with plantings. And are you taking that out and replacing it or are you leaving that island that's there uh, to the uh, north of the existing building? Is uh, that the intent? Yeah, when we did One East Pleasant, we ended up you know, improving a bunch of Laird's property because that, uh, that parking and the property line kind of melded together. Yeah. So okay. the intent is that those those landscapes are integrated. Um, okay. Similar right. ground Maybe. cover, Maybe. red twig dogwoods. Yeah. Okay, whatever is there now, it's a strip of, you know, it looks pretty solid, but I didn't know whether you were going to take it out, do something else. Okay. All right, Jan, did you have any comments on this? I, I don't understand what you're talking about, Catherine. What strip to the north of this building? Uh, well, it, no, it's to the north of the existing building. It's in between the new building. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he shows yeah. that in the rendering. Yeah. I think, Kyle, you accidentally said you were talking about a row of trees on the north. I think you meant on the south. Um, uh, I did mean on the south. Sorry. I think that's what confused people because actually that would help soften the view from the north yeah, if there were trees. Yeah. And the you know, what are we talking about here? Relation of structures and spaces. I mean, this is almost there were a lot line in some cases because of all the variances and pushing, pushing to get the maximum coverage. And so one thing that would help probably a lot of people feel better about the building and would help that expanse of asphalt and then the sudden straight up wall would be to have some plantings on the north side. But you, you know, you've gotten so close to the edge. Yeah, yeah. Unless you use part of 15, um, after construction, and I, you know, I still have a question which I've asked before about what is the eventual disposition of 15 East Pleasant. I mean, maybe there you could soften at least half the north facade by having um, trees and some sort of green space. Um, you know, yeah, used. I don't, I don't know what you're going to do. Okay. Any other thoughts about this? If not, we can go on to um, shape. 
the shape of roofs, windows, doors, and other design elements should be compatible with the architectural style and character of the building or site and that of its surroundings. So uh, what are your thoughts on this? Erica, did you have some notes on that? Y'all are making me go first every time. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you're, you kick us off and we know what to, where we go. Okay, so I, my notes, my, my uh, sketches to myself say that um, the east side of East Pleasant Street is marked by flat roofed commercial and mixed use buildings. As I mentioned before, in our proportion section, I think that the overall building window and door proportions are compatible here. This is not a recreation of a 19th century building, nor should it be. And in fact, the DRB standards are, quote, not intended to discourage creativity, invention, or innovation. The building's overall character is well composed as an individual structure and as a neighbor. Uh, the flat roof allows for location of mechanical equipment and I feel like as long as screening is provided so that this equipment is not visible from the street, uh, it's fine with me. Okay. okay. Other comments? Tom, anything from your pr perspective? Um, no, generally speaking, I think the shape is, a, you know, seems appropriate for the site, for the scale and the proportion, and again, is in line with a large percentage of the buildings downtown um, that do have a um, flat horizontal um, top edge um, without um, extraneous detail, um, also in connection with the bank building next door and the building um, at one East Pleasant on the other side. So um, from a shape perspective, I don't see any particular outstanding issues. Okay, very good. Lindsay or Jan? I think I generally agree with that, although as I've pointed out a couple of times, I do think there could have been some some interesting ways to articulate the skin that um, just are, are a little bit lacking on the north side. I think that the south side was done really well in terms of the reveals, um, but the north side is, is just lacking a bit in terms of um, finding, finding interesting ways to break down the length of that plane. Um, okay. Jan, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I have no problem with the okay. shape. I mean, I said last time that I actually kind of like the look of this building, that it has a cleaner, more Bauhaus look than those other two buildings they built. Um, but I, I still think that it's just pushing the edges of the available land too much. Okay. All right, then let's go on to landscaping. We've touched on that a bit. Um, I, I'm just gonna say it is really a pity that the north side, there's no room because that would give such a different look to that building if there, the plantings that are facing south could appear on the north, uh, number one for me. Um, I'm not sure about, First, you've changed to an, from a Norway maple to another kind of plant. That's fine. I, but I don't know, Kyle, if, and maybe Mr. Snow can talk about this. There isn't a lot, you got 10 to 12 feet between those two big buildings. How can anything grow back in there? I love the idea of the illusion. I thought that was an extremely attractive a uh, proposal to have the walk go back, although people then want to know how they're gonna to get to the cemetery. And so, I mean, they got bigger and bigger and it didn't have to be, but so the effect, but I, I don't see enough room in there to have as many plantings as your design, uh, your landscape designer has proposed that can grow healthily in between two five-story buildings. Um, that boggles my mind. I'm not a landscaper, but I know sun does man does matter in having healthy and I'd rather nothing worse than having a bunch of scr scrawny trees after a few years because they've been deprived of sunlight. And that to me is the biggest question about your landscaping. I don't know if it strikes other people that way. That was that's my concern. It's a real concern. 
Um, um, Catherine, if I may, yeah. um, I was kind of curious on on this topic myself. So I, I reached out to the tree warden, Alan Snow, about, about um, you know, the shading between the proposed building uh -huh. and the existing building at One East Pleasant Street. Yes. On, and said, you know, it's it's shady there for a good, for, you know, for a certain amount of months in the year. And his response is that the trees would do just fine and um, and compared it to trees in the forest, um, in, in shady forests yeah. that, yeah. Uh, that well, they, they do fine. So um, he no. did not have any specific um, uh, issues. Well, I think gonna, I forwarded you, you, you everyone did. the well, that email. Was from, that was, yes, and that was from the previous landscaping plan. But yeah, trees grow in the forest, but if you notice, they get tall and scrawny and at the base, there's no- This isn't a change in tree variety though, is it? It is from, yeah. There no, was well, um, Norway Kyle, maple. Yes. No, 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 no. Um, it's Armstrong maple. A Norway maple is actually an invasive plant, so we don't well, we I don't thought, like plants. Well, maybe those. Kyle can straighten it out. Did I thought that was originally proposed? Didn't I read Norway maple? I, I never heard of one until. Uh, I mean, I love the idea of, of a lot of landscaping. I just, I mean, yeah, sure, uh, okay, whatever. But uh, definitely, a tree will <laughs> try to get to the to the sun, but that doesn't mean that it's going to look good on the ground, close to the ground. I'm just trying to get the best look for that land, possible landscaping. And so um, I know you reached out to him and then the, he's, and then they changed the uh, plantings. So that's just me. I just love landscaping. I love healthy landscaping and I respect the way in which the developers have tried to provide that. I'm just not convinced that uh, in that little narrow space of 10 feet, they're going, those plants will survive. Um, will Catherine, uh, uh, we, uh, Ms. Br uh, uh, Christine Brestrup would like to speak. Okay, sure. Hi, thank you for letting me speak. Chris Brestrup, um, planning director. I just wanted to note that Armstrong maples were in the first um, set of drawings that we received. So the type of tree hasn't changed. Um, the tree is a columnar version of a maple, and so it's well suited to um, growing in a narrow space. Okay. And um, I think there will be enough light. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trained as a landscape architect, and I practiced for a number All of right. years. So okay. I believe that the trees will be, you know, will grow well in this location, and okay. and I do think that they will be well cared for. So, Good. thank you. All right. Bye. Yeah, I think my comment to follow that up um, would be that uh, if you look at the, the shadow um, mapping that was done for us um, at the solstice, it's in full sunlight all day. Um, and then obviously it would taper off as you go further into um, the spring and the fall in either direction, but it would get full sun during peak growth season um, based on what's shown in this particular mapping. Um, okay. So. All right. Um, and then just one of my other comments was that um, this revision to the plan is coming also from some of the feedback I think Kyle got from the uh, planning board um, in terms of um, imagining this space between the sidewalk or between the edge of this property and the curb. Um, and I think continuing the kind of landscape um, elements in terms of the hardscape that this building has and bring that all the way out to the curb providing benches, providing plantings, um, starts to mimic the kind of language that we do see downtown where we have buildings and then we have this sort of way to move through that space. Um, and then across from that is a place to sit. You know, I'm trying to imagine outside of Antonio's or places like that where um, you have a storefront, you then have a path and then you have a resting area. And I think that this um, landscape that uh, uh, proposal that's been provided for the street front um, is really mimicking that as best as can be done with the um, um, you know the public space out there and I think it's well integrated into the storefront um, with your pulling back I do think that I agree with Erica it'd be nice to see a little bit more space pulled back but um, but again I do think that you know it, it is well integrated on that um, street front facade. So I'm happy to see that change. And I think it made a big difference for me in terms of how I imagine that streetscape. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jan, would you like to uh, 
Awesome. Is there a chance that those, uh, I think it's three trees you show on the Western um, Boulevard, this next to the sidewalk, that those could be maybe a different variety of maple that are more of a branching shade tree than the tall columnar would offer a softer, you know, shady, just to, just to look different and to have less of kind of punctuated verticals and more of a kind of welcoming, softer look at that side, would, would that be possible? Absolutely. And we would plant whatever tree Alan Snow told us to plant for the street. <laughs> it'd, be a great, it'd be a great canopy there to cover the seated yeah. areas around. It'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, could you put that down as something to ask Alan, somebody? Yeah. Maureen? Well, um, and I think that, I think, sorry, Jen, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say our intent with this the street to get out front also wasn't to solve the whole thing. There's a lot of committees. There's a lot of people that need to talk about the right of way. It was to show we're willing to do all this if people don't want the tree guards or a different tree grade or a slightly different paver or get rid of the concrete or the granite bollards or a different tree species. We're open to all of that and do not have a strong enough opinion to uh, to push. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the only other thing I would add is to go back to what I said before, I still would like to strongly ask the planning board to not grant the variance and to keep us at 20 feet and that the trees be on the cemetery side um, after the fence is moved and to just open that space up more and not have a continual wall along that side of the cemetery. Um, I guess that, you know, that's not something that fits in with your maximization of square footage on that piece of property, but um, I don't think that variance should be given. And if, if, I, if I may, uh, quickly on that, um, to be clear, everybody understands, we are not seeking a variance beyond the by right site coverage that is called for in the zoning bylaw. Um, so we are not looking to cover more of this site than is allowed by right in the zoning. Um, uh, pushing setback uh, is set at 20 and you're asking for 10, right? Am I correct? Uh, the, the, the approach with a 20 foot setback on that site makes uh, a significant part of North downtown undevelopable uh, that I think is a, a uh, that is suboptimal from a planning standpoint. I think that what we've shown is the existing building is much closer to the site. We've shown five feet, we've pulled it back to 10 feet. Um, I think going to 20 feet means you lose a residential units. You lose apartments. And in this case, um, it would end up losing affordable apartments because, um, you know, adding, taking another 10 feet off of this site is, is would do that to the mass. Also, Jan, as you brought up, that we're maximizing, maximizing, maximizing. We're doing it by the bylaw. This is what the town asked for in, in, in zoning. So I think that the you know, the, the town allows for a zero setback on the north and the south. We're trying to accommodate an 80 foot wide site that is very narrow and still provide the, you know, the housing and the mixed use um, and trying to do that within, like I said, an 80 foot site and integrate the landscape uh, as, as best as we can. No, I understand you have a very small lot and you're trying to get the most out of it. I just, you know. If I, I may, I just wanted to clarify um, that uh, regarding the setback, the rear setback, um, the applicant is asking uh, for a special permit under section 9.22 of the zoning bylaw to allow a setback of 10 feet on the east side, the rear side of the building adjacent to West Cemetery as a reconstruction of a non-conforming ex existing building. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay. So, did that go through the Zoning Board of Appeals? Uh, since uh, this permit granting authority uh, for this buy right use, a mixed use building um, uh, that all associated um, uh, uh, modifications would uh, be uh, grouped together with the Planning Board for their review and deliberation. Okay, okay. Um, so Kyle, how did you get the uh, extra you moved, you provided 10 feet in the back. What did that mean for the building in general? Did you have to uh, cut back on the size of the apartments or? We did that all at the same time when we ran up, when we 
revised the design to okay. include the affordable housing. All right. So all okay. of the units were um, uh, at that point. diminished a bit. Okay. All right. Uh, any yeah. other? Yeah. Sorry, Catherine. May I? Um, I I think that um, a lot of great points were raised, but I um, a couple of things that we haven't talked about. Um, I I am really intrigued by the kind of identification of the large boulder art feature in the in the plaza area, and um, would like to make sure that that remains. Um, and I think that lighting fixtures are consistent with your design language here. Um, the DRB had requested additional information about lighting levels to provide a safe environment. I think that may have been a comment <laughs> largely about the, the pedestrian pathway when there was parking and that's gone. Um, but as you've pointed out, you're aiming for uh, LEED certification and that demands that you uh, minimize light pollution. So there's a balance between providing a safe environment and um, a low pollution environment. And I'm um, wondering if we need more information about not what the lights look like, but what the light levels are. Um, and while the sidewalk width is only um, five feet wide here, I do appreciate the extension of the hardscape on either side. And as Tom mentioned, um, that's a, you know, it's a good way to accommodate the use and density of the building. I do think that the street trees should continue the town's plan for um, street tree integration. So that would be like a nice continuation of what is found uh, farther to the south. And um, tend to agree with the argument from the historical commission about shade trees being planted on the cemetery side of the fence. Uh, rather than competing with uh, trees on your property on the north side, but maybe there is a kind of a, a, a lower level, uh, a lower growing tree that would appreciate kind of an understory that you could consider there. Um, and I love Jan's earlier idea of using the 15 East Pleasant Street lot for um, planting, if you could, to mitigate the north facade. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts? Anything from Lindsay? Okay. Okay, I, I think know. everything's been said that. Okay. Too. All right. Okay. All right. So we've uh, addressed scale and now we're going to directional expression. Seems like we're sort of got ourselves caught in a gerbil wheel here, but go on. Um, building facades and other architectural and landscape design elements shall be compatible with those of others in the surrounding area with regard to the dominant vertical or horizontal expression or direction related to use and historical or cultural character as appropriate. Um, Catherine, I think you skipped scale, but- Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. If you really yeah. talked oh, about okay. it already because- I'm these losing are it redundant. Here. I can't These are very redundant. I mean, yeah, everything in scale we've talked about, directional expression we've kind of talked about, so. Yeah, okay, well, okay. So uh, I missed, if I missed scale, I'm sorry. I thought we, I thought we were sort of on scale with all that landscape uh, in the plaza. <laughs> well, if, if our chart <laughs> could address them, I think that <laughs> yeah. um, you, could, you could ask, I suppose. Okay, then, all right, good. I'm sorry, I was went on to directional, ex, directional expression. Um, are there any other comments uh, that we should have included? We did talk about the plaza, I think earlier, uh, we talked about pedestrian furniture and I think Kyle had uh, included that. Uh, lighting, we just discussed that. Um, and, um, I think other, I think really much it goes back to how does it fit into the, uh, its site. And we've discussed that before, unless I've left something out. Anything else? Yeah, my, my, okay, notes, are, my notes are really about the part of the, um, the standard here that talks about the scale of ground level design elements. Okay. 
And so I wanted to just address the the human sure. scale of the buildings or the the relationship to the pedestrian, um, which is you know always primarily at the first level. And here I think it's appropriate and even a little bit playful. Mm -hmm. um, the overhang creates a retest, recessed retail facade and creates an extension of the narrow sidewalk. It's a covered outdoor space that opens to um, you know a slightly larger uh, paved plaza. And it provides a welcome gesture for residents and retail shoppers. It's shady in the afternoon. It's covered in the rain. Um, and I think that the, the maple trees, once they're mature, will start to create a kind of soft ceiling um, and a visual break between the adjacent buildings. Good. OK. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I didn't want to step on other people's toes if you have more comments related to scale. Um, uh, I, I don't know where this really fits in, but I wanted to ask Kyle about, uh, you now have two retail, you, you have blocked out two retail spots, is that correct? And do they both, do both doors face uh, out onto East Pleasant or is one on the side? Uh, what we've shown is the um, 1700 square feet and then 500 square feet back of house. And those are, uh, those would be one tenant and those doors as I think Maureen's pulling up on the plans and exit in one to Pleasant Street and one to the egress path on the south. Okay, so one's off to the side. So, yeah. And um, there is there any, um, I'm guessing no, but uh, any way for these retail establishments to have awnings or signs posted out closer, uh, out beyond the um, overhang so that they can attract some attention or are we relying on signage to be on the window or the door, which would be slightly recessed? Uh, good question. I think we have a couple options here when we figure out the tenancy and the required signage is it could be behind the glass, it could be on the glass, it could be hung from the overhang that is projecting okay. out, it could right. come off of the storefront. There's there's a number of different options. Okay, okay. And you said one was 500 square feet? Uh, this is, uh, we see this as one tenant. One tenant with two, okay. So it's not two. With two means of egress. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's one one retail space. I thought, I thought we had added another. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little confused here. No, it's fine. Yeah, so, it's the, 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 there's one space that occupies the whole floor. Okay, floor. you've added, okay, you've added It more turned space. around, it, it got yes, bigger because right. our lobby used to be here. Yeah, okay. We got rid of that I'm, and made that retail yeah. and pushed the lobby further. I understand, okay, all right. Um, and that space, could you give me an idea of, of another space in Amherst that might be similar to that? So people listening tonight could get a sense of what, kind of space you're uh, providing. In terms of the square footage? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what store, um, Amherst, what restaurant in Amherst, what space in Amherst? It's that's a, a little bigger time. than the Aya Sushi space. A little bigger than the Aya? Aya Sushi, that's okay, on the south right. side of Winnie's Pleasant. Okay. That's a all deeper right. space that's skinnier. This is obviously wider right. and wraps around. Yeah, okay, that's helpful. I think people need to understand what we're talking about here. All right. Anything else under scale? I think that the scale is well handled, especially at the um, at the street edge and the stepping of that overhang. I think that was a really nice gesture, and I think it lends itself to some interesting lighting and um, and signage. So I look forward to seeing what you choose to do with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on scale? <laughs> then we'll go to directional expression. Uh, somebody like to start a discussion on that. It seems like we've sort of discussed this, um, but if you think we need to touch on something, when well, let's hear from it now. Um, um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I think I, right, we, we've addressed a lot of what remains um, yeah. 
here, but I think, you know, the horizontal expression of the facade, um, which is emphasized by the sill line reveals in the diagonal line, demarking the shift of um, from brick to wood that characterizes the first floor on the north and south um, is, is nice. And the recessed expression of the ground floor retail and its treatment um, in glazing and brick also increases the hierarchical expression of the first level, which is consistent with adjacent buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other any other comments? Before, if not, we can move on to architectural and site details. So, I mean, I just had one quick comment. Sure. I do think that there is a, a pretty strong mix of horizontal and vertical elements within the, the landscape of downtown. And even adjacent to this building, I think um, One East Pleasant has a much more vertical expression, um, especially in the lower levels. Um, whereas the bank next door is entirely horizontal in terms of its expression. So again, it's hard to to say what um, you know what's right or wrong, but I do think that it, it doesn't feel like it doesn't belong within okay. a landscape that has multiple directions going on. So, um, so I, it's, it has an appropriateness based on the context. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think somebody needs to speak for all the people who are concerned about the relationship to those on the west side of the street, the two-story houses, two-story houses. And I, I realize that this is a completely different animal and it's a, a drop in the pool of what we're talking about, but there are a number of people who feel that the, the contrast between one side of the street and the other is just increasing with more of these buildings. That said, I agree that this has more horizontal articulation, which goes better with the um, older houses than the other archipelago buildings. Um, I would like to have seen it at four stories instead of five, but you know, this is the way things are going. I do think that we need to continue to value the difference though between the two sides of the street and um, allow the fact that that's very well loved that streetscape on the west side um, and that any further densification, if you will, shouldn't occur where those structures are, but if anything behind them. I'm just sort of previewing fears I have that um, that's next. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, any other thoughts on directional expression? I do, I have to say, I, I do agree that we have to, uh, uh, the other side of the street. Um, could be in peril because um, just because this may tend to pe encourage people to think big and uh, people love the Kendrick Park area and they love what it looks like now. So. Okay. Architectural and site details. Actually, I wanted to bring up one thing here. Um, it's interesting, the cedar siding. Uh, it's a new departure from anything we've seen in Amherst. And maybe that's good and maybe that's bad. I think what concerns me and Kyle, I know you've, you, you're favoring this, um, is the longevity of the siding. It's gonna look good the first year, maybe the first five years, but what's it gonna look like in 10, 20, 30, or 40 years? I've envisioned a building where the finish is just worn off and it just looks like a skaggy old building. How can we be sure that this cedar siding with its coating will hold up so it has a, so the building has a dignity to it um, as for as long as it is alive. Brick is one thing, but this is very different. And it's a very, very big building. And if it goes bad, uh, it's gonna, we're gonna have a problem. So um, I'll hand it over to you to just assure us that in 20 years or 30 years, it's gonna look the same. It's not like a well, web building on Cape Cod. 
Well, I, I appreciate that. I think that, you know, using wood as a natural material means it's a natural material. If we wanted it to look the same today as it does in 25 years, we'd use, you know, cement or plastic or Tyva, you know, uh, tracks or something that was going to have less of a natural material to it. I think that our previous discussion about the finishing of the cedar, the intent of that is to pre-gray it. Um, the selection of the Alaskan yellow cedar is such that it it ages gracefully. Um, the pre-graying assists with that. So the intent is that this is a natural material that does reflect itself. It reflects its time. It reflects when it was, you know, it's, it's a natural material. Um, so obviously the intent is also that the building remains elegant. If it's not elegant, it doesn't work for anybody involved. If it doesn't uh, stand strong and tall in the center of town as that natural element um, gains age, it's not going to work for anybody. So um, that's why we've chosen a very robust uh, Alaskan yellow cedar as the base material and the water-based uh, Cabot bleaching stain that we think will uh, get us, uh, um, will provide the best uh, overall finish. So do you have any examples of buildings with this siding that are older than, uh, you know, that are, that have aged gracefully? Uh, uh, well, I mean, Kendrick Place up the street is five years old now. Um, uh, One East Pleasant opened in 2018. So it's almost two years old. Um, I think we've used the exact same product in now in both of those. So I think it. Okay, they're it cedar. The, those are they're the Alaskan cedar. yellow cedar in, okay. in particular with the exact same Cabot bleaching yeah. stain on it. Okay, so as far as you as a, a owner of a building this way, you don't anticipate that I can't imagine how much it would cost to have to go and restain uh, a building of that size. So I'm not looking, I'm not sure how you're saying that the buildings you've built are aging gracefully with the currently aging gracefully. And that's what we should expect from this building too. I yeah, I would say that the Alaskan yellow cedar we've used at Kendrick and we've used at One East Pleasant is the same material we'd use here. The yeah. finish is the same. Um, and um, and we've, we've settled on that for a variety of reasons, one of which is long, longevity. Okay. And it's going to be the color you showed us, which is a, seems to be a little more, um, not as bleached out as your other two. It's, um, is it going to be a little darker? The, rendering... the intent was to show, you know, it, it's going to be this, it's going to be identical. It's the same material, same finish. So the intent oh, was to is. show that. Okay, because mm -hmm. it's a little misleading with the renderings. It looks a little darker, a little creamier. Uh, so we're really going to get a fairly white off-white building from the get-go. Is that what you said? I think we've done a pretty good job of representing the color of it, but um, oh, okay. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think you're wrong. <laughs> I think okay. your, your rendering uh, and what you've shown look, is a little darker, uh, which I'm not objecting to, but um, if it's, but uh, it's not as light as the uh, paneling on your well, and we've got a picture of the Alaskan yellow cedar on the last slide that yeah, is yeah, an I exact that. product. That's the that's the yeah. color we were trying to match in the rendering. So okay, so that's what you're putting up. Okay, all right, that was my concern. And just real quick on a different point that Erica brought up, um, Erica, the granite in the on the exterior as you come into the lobby is the same granite that has exceedingly been put in across the street at Kendrick Park Swenson granite. So all that stuff has kind of showed up over the last couple of weeks and has been set in place on the new playground. And it's the same manufacturer, same quarry. Thank you. Okay. okay. Any, other, any other questions about architectural and site details? Um, uh, did we come to a conclusion about signage for the building uh, or is that something you're still Thinking about still seeking a, a waiver on that to come back and what yeah, okay. the tenant is. All right. Okay. Um, all right. We're moving on to signs. The design of signs should reflect the scale and character of the structure or site and its surroundings. Signs should simply and clearly identify individual establishments, buildings, locations, and uses while remaining subordinate to the architecture and larger streetscape. Okay. 
All right, anybody have uh, comments on signage? I think Kyle's sort of given us an idea. But... Yeah. We have much to respond to since they haven't made a presentation. Right. Yeah, I don't know that we have anything more to. Uh... I believe uh, Miss Brushstrap has raised her hand. Sure. Chris? So usually the planning board, if they don't receive um, a sign package as part of their uh, application, they will put in a condition that says um, the signs and the sign system need to come back before the planning board for review before installation. And that would also include review by the design review board because you all have to review. Right, it comes back. Signs. Yeah, yep. okay, all right. Um, all right, any other thoughts? So if, if we are, uh, um, Kyle, go, go ahead. Uh, I, this this might be out of out of turn here, but I think that that is similar to the conversations we've had at the planning board about the east side of the building and the west side of the building in terms of public improvements in the cemetery. That in a condition that satisfies, if you know, this needs to meet all of these different committees on the streetscape. Um, we're willing to commit the resources to improve it. We've given an idea. If people want four bollars instead of three. So be it, and it could be, you know, that could be caught up in a condition. Same thing on the east side with the cemetery, um, whether or not we want the trees there, if Alan Snow doesn't want them, that could also, you know, we could see that being reconciled in a condition that gives the DRB and the planning board and the town an ability to come back and finalize it prior to us getting our certificate of occupancy. Yeah. Uh, one other thought uh, on the north side, is that where your delivery uh, and your trash will be uh, handled? Yeah. Uh, okay. It, and now, and you have all those bollards and then the rest, then that's not your property. So uh, who owns that uh, strip that would have to be used for uh, picking up trash and UPS and uh, that's, Amazon? That, the, the, the parcel we're buying, the property we're buying is five parcels. The northernmost oh, okay. parcel so is the one with that. the easement. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. uh, Catherine, um, so it, it seems that you are concluding your discussion yes. over yes. Um, the design uh, principles and standards. Um, if we are following with the agenda as as written, um, would you like to open it up to public yes. comment? Yes. And okay. if so, um, so if if we're all looking at the time, uh, we did say that this meeting would end at seven o'clock. Um, I don't know if that's possible or, uh, or, or how folks are thinking. Um, would, how long would uh, the board like to keep the public comments open? Uh, would you like to give them you know, three minutes each or uh, perhaps a total of uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes? Um, yeah, it's hard to know. How many do we have, do you know? Uh, two so far. Okay, all right. Well, maybe keep it to two or three minutes. Oh, three. The council, three. The council and the planning board have been using a three minute. Yeah, uh, that's right. I think that's been effective with a, you know, just a handful of people. It, you know, yeah, yep. Okay, okay. Uh, right. um, I don't have the, um, the snazzy technology that the yeah. town council has with, uh, they have a, they pull up a clock, but yeah. I, I will um, start my clock. Okay, and start uh, we'll start with Hilda Greenbaum. Okay. Um, so right. let's see here. Hold on, Hilda. Uh, I gotta press a couple buttons. Wait, let me hold on a second. So we're gonna hold on. Okay, Hilda, if you could state your name and your address. Yeah, Hilda Greenbaum, 298 Montague Road. And I'm sitting here listening, especially to Erica, who was obviously a professional architect. I think she's looking at a different building than the rest of us. I just don't see any of the things that she thinks are so wonderful. And I, I'm especially astonished by the view from Triangle Street, Prey Street area, looking at this huge, massive, what is it, 200 foot block. Seems to me that there could be a 20 foot setback to the cemetery. After all, that is, I keep saying, what draws people to this town are tourists who come to, to worship at Emily's grave. 
And that border along the cemetery has to look presentable to tourists if we want to keep, keep them coming here. I think that there could be a 20 foot setback. Why not cantilever the upper floors to 10 feet and have the 20 foot setback on the first floor? I think the long uninterrupted row of along the north side needs some kind of articulation. You can't have a thing that long that just looks, it reminds me of driving along Boston Landing on the Mass Turnpike by exit 18. You think that these buildings are gonna fall over on you as you're driving on a road as wide as the Mass Turnpike. That really, to me, looks horrendous from, from the Triangle Street lot and needs to be softened. It needs to be cut back. Um, as I say, you could cantilever the back, the east end, like you cantilever the front end, it might look a little bit better. And certainly some articulations along that north wall that everybody's gonna see coming down East Pleasant Street. Um, I happen to be in the, the, the driveway of the Boltwood garage the other day, and I looked up at a building that's now, I think four years old. And the seat on that building is all black and warped and it looks moldy. That may be the natural color of it, but I don't know if you can put a condition on the permit that the exterior has to be kept painted, stained or whatever, so that it doesn't look like the building on the Boltwood. Um, the other thing that bothers me is the huge shadows from these buildings on, these, on, on Kendrick Park that we now are investing all this money in. And I'm worried that the other side of the street's gonna end up being a canyon if we put in the BL overlay over there, which is now putting 50 feet building on, on okay, the- Okay, Hilda. The, anyway, okay, I've said it. I, I, I think something needs to be done to break down the mass of that building from the north. Thank you. Okay, so next uh, we have um, Pam Rooney, if you could state your name and your address. Sure, hi, Pam Rooney, 42 Cottage Street. Thanks for letting me speak. Um, I would ask that we strongly um, adhere to some of the table, the dimensional table requirements. One being that we keep the height at 55 feet um, I would like to remind people that the total height of the building uh, in this case will re will include mechanical sheds. It will include, I don't know what, how high the, um, the mechanical screens are, but in fact, the screens cast as much of a shadow as the, as, as the, as the building itself. Um, I sit from my window and can see Kendrick Place, and I will say that um, a half hour before sunset uh, during most of the winter, my upstairs uh, window is in shade a half an hour earlier before normal uh, sunset time. So it really does, it really does affect the, the places and people around it. Um, the reduction of the setback uh, along the north side so the setback on the north side, which is this massive wall that everyone's been talking about, should be five, 10 feet. It's been requested for five. And it feels like one of the, I hate to say it because as a landscape architect, you know, you don't want to just have to plant shrubs to cover up an architect's mistake, but having a, a 10 foot setback on that side truly would help ameliorate some of the, the, um, the massiveness. There's a laciness, there's a texture, there's a character that is immediately sensed by a, a pedestrian at the ground level that, and, and also a sort of a variation and a, and a stratification that is seen by people coming in from Prey Street. And these are all very important um, aspects to just initial impressions and character of what we show people as they drive into town. Um, as well as, oh, by the way, the people that live here at 
Cottage Street and Cray Street are major pedestrian routes. And I think, I think we, you need to impose some uh, capability of softening that very, very large block. Windows are one thing, but it, they do nothing to, in fact, break up that scale. So I'll, I'll stop there. I have lots of other ideas, but I think my time is up. Thank you, uh, Pam. Okay, so next we have, let's see here, Ira Brick. Ira, if you could state your name and your address. Hi, I'm Ira Brick. My address is 255 Strong Street. As you, can, as you discuss the proposed changes in the plan for 11 East Pleasant, please consider what is best for the current and future generations of our Amherst community. People have moved here and enjoyed living here because it's been a town that is life-sized, designed to meet neighbors, make people relaxed around attractive architecture, provide the means to get their errands done, and to enjoy the character of a livable New England college town. When I looked at colleges with my children, there were college towns that made that college more appealing. It certainly was a positive attribute of downtown Amherst that attracted me to raise my family here. And as the most appealing college towns have also evolved to attract retirees and transplants, the downtown is more than ever needed to be a resource to the community. So I'm quite concerned that future downtown Amherst if there are more of the five story monolithic dorms built in our center and this one will even hurt our beloved main industry higher education. If town committees like the design review board hold to the standards that have made Amherst successful, our future is bright as a healthy place to live. But if you don't, if you allow tiny setbacks, inferior design, no parking, few places to do business, an inadequate nod to affordability and inclusion, variances galore for the Midwestern hedge fund that owns them and a character assassinating blandness, we will fail. 11 East Pleasant is the latest incarnation of what 900 people clearly stated they do not want in this town. The town government rejected that call for a pause or moratorium to make a plan before changing numerous zoning bylaws in shockingly random fashion. This is while they admit that six months isn't nearly long enough or that they will quote, never get it right, unquote. I'm urging the design review board to consider what it means to protect the design integrity of this town. Be a strong board, thinking independently and collaboratively to uphold the standards of the town you're serving. Please push back on the expedience with which so many unexplored changes are being made so that Amherst gets to grow and improve, not be sold to the highest bidder. Thank you. Thank you, Ira. Um, next, we have Dorothy Pam. Dorothy, if you could state your name and your address. Hi, Dorothy Pam, 229 Amity Street. Uh, I have two questions. Um, I still am not clear how we got to have five-story buildings in the BG. Um, again and again, people refer to the uh, older buildings around the North Common. Um, I think those are four stories tall. So somehow all of a sudden we get one, now we get two, and now we're gonna maybe change our zoning so that all the new buildings in the BG are five stories tall. And you've heard again and again from people that um, that is not what people want. Um, again, looking at the older buildings around the North Common, they have interesting windows. They're just very interesting and varied. But I noticed, I looked again today, and I, I, I do realize that you've been making a lot of, of changes, but you have these floor to ceiling glass windows, which are not places that, they're not livable. Um, so that people end up keeping their curtains drawn the whole time. And so what the public sees is kind of like curtains that are generally askew. I mean, there are buildings like that in New York City that don't look good. They're not inviting, they're not attractive. And I don't think I'd want to live in one where I have to keep my curtains closed all the time so that, you know, I'm not totally on view. Um, so I really have a problem with the windows. I think if you didn't make them so, you know, floor to ceiling, that would make a difference. Um, if they had more interesting um, uh, architecture around the windows, like some of the older buildings do. Um, and just, you know, think about being living in that place yourself or having window seats. 
I think that would be very nice. Um, obviously, we're going to have some new buildings and they're going to be tall, taller than what's been there. But I'm just saying once again, please, let's keep it four stories and let's make them reflect some of the interesting variation in architecture that we see in the um, other kind of urbanish part of our downtown. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, that is all the, no, I don't see any other raised hands. So uh, I guess we'll close the I, uh, public comment. Yeah, I have or, uh, a, would the applicant like to respond to any yeah. of the public comments received? Uh, I, I, I could respond to when the town voted for five stories um, and as in town meeting. Um, I think that in terms of the height and the location of the building and so on, I think we've been pretty clear on, on what we proposed and trying to uh, revise things as we've gone forward to accommodate um, requested changes with the board. I wanted but to But I'm open, if the board has questions, I'm open to obviously answering those. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a question I, as the public was speaking, it occurred to me, you said you own that property to the north of your proposed building. And if so, what would prevent you from landscaping that side and make it like a really beautiful uh, assortment of trees, which would make such a difference to the quality of, of that whole, um, of the building and of the location. Because this building is going to, as I say, stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, uh, the, the, the parcel to the north is part of the, uh, the five parcels that we would be buying. Yeah. Um, a significant portion of that is an easement that serves our parcel, that parcel, the bank parcel, and is tied up in the history of, of the place. The back portion, as we've said before the planning board, we see as we don't know what that will be yet. We obviously see that as part of uh, future development uh, efforts in our very small BG. Okay, so you're saying there's no, there's no room. You you can't put trees there because that would make such a difference. So. I sort of uh, regret. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say that you know a big stretch of that is an easement that serves other parcels besides. All right. That. Okay. I understand. Yeah. So. I, the back section, I mean, Eric and I both mentioned the back section of 15 East Pleasant could still, once construction is complete, have some landscaping uh -huh. to soften uh -huh. the eastern end of the north. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I think that the eastern end of 15 East Pleasant is to be determined. We don't know what that is. We don't know how that the relates to adjacent of, property. Yeah, it'd be the south side of 15 East Pleasant, but it would help the eastern end of 11. You see what I mean? The, the yep. north. It would be south. the southeastern side of 15. Right? Yeah. And yeah. that's only. We don't know. That starts part way back, doesn't it? 15 doesn't come all the way to the street. 15 goes all the way to the street. So oh, when yeah. this parcel included the bank on the corner, that was broken up in a spur to Pleasant, and a spur to Prey was retained. Okay. Um, so that spur that goes out from where that highway barrier is, where the pub uh, deck is out to the street, that is a, an easement, a full easement. Um, and I think that the future of the site, there's a lot to be determined what happens to where the pub um, is, what happens to that relative to Prey Street, what happens to that relative to other properties. And that is, we don't know the answer to that today. Well, my overall impression is um, I really regret that the architects did not give a nod to Amherst at, with the res understanding that how Amherst responds to, uh, has, thinks about its downtown. And this building, I think is really an impressive building. I think it would look perfect on the UMass campus, the Hampshire College campus, the Amherst College campus. I really don't think it fits on East Pleasant Street, Amherst, Massachusetts, USA. Um, it's got a lot of interesting pieces to it, but, uh, and 
my greatest fear was that we were going to see one red brick building after another, one big clunky building. So we'd so we would have then the Amherst Office Park. Well, this uh, having this interesting wooden wood siding building breaks up that nightmare that I hold in my head. Um, but I think it's uh, a real jolt to where it is. Um, However, I mean, we've had the discussion. I just wanted to, uh, yeah. we have to be sensitive to people at Amherst um, and what they, the comfort level, what it, I'm not gonna go on anymore, but I just wanted to throw in that last piece. You know. it has some good, it has a number of interesting features. I just wish it wasn't there. So we're coming at seven o'clock right now. Okay. All right. Um, and I just want to check in with board members of where they are with time um, and whether you want to continue with this meeting tonight with making your, your deliberation. Um, I think we should because I think the planning board, is that right, Kyle? Is, are you going to the planning board on Wednesday with this? On the 28th. Oh, a week from Wednesday. All right. Okay. okay. So but we should collate our recommendations while this yeah. is fresh in our minds. Yeah, I, I agree. I yeah, just want to just verify. Yeah, I don't everyone. think we want to put this on to another date. So, uh, so we have to frame a recommendation that uh, encompasses our comments, both concerns as well as possible positive comments so that we can pass it on to the planning board. Um, does anybody have a, an idea of how you think we should approach this or should we recommend that from the planning board that the project go forth with um, the concerns that we still have after this discussion? Uh, I, so the I, board, um, although you all individually have great thoughts and ideas, uh, you know, the intention really is for the board as a whole to um, make a motion on the findings under uh, uh, yes. section three right. of, of, of the zoning bylaw um, regarding the design principles and standards. Um, so, and then also makes uh, specific suggestions um, as they relate to that. So I don't know if it makes sense to sort of go back to each of them um, and make a motion on, on each of the standards or um, if someone else well, has a- We could better. say one thing would be we, re we recommend acceptance of the project after review of the design standards um, and then that's one way to do it, I suppose. And then if we have specific concerns that we still don't feel have been addressed, we can add those in. Um, okay. Did you want to start with uh, uh, the design standard regarding height? Um, what, as a board, what? what I don't works? think you should break it down by standard. No. It's much too ponderous to do that yeah. and they overlap so much. Yeah. What's the general sense that we have after our discussion and going yeah. over each of the standards? Do we have any major concerns we would like to place as conditions if we were to suggest that the board move forward? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, make the recommendation and then uh, pull out any uh, specific conditions. Uh, okay. All right. So let me hear from the board as to what specific concerns or conditions you would like to have included in this recommendation. I don't hear you yet. Any concerns? Or shall we just go straight forward and say, we, after a full discussion of the design standards, we are uh, recommending that the uh, project go forward. Is that sufficient? No, I think that the, uh, 
planning okay. board should know that we talked about a number okay. of concerns. Okay, well, that's what I'm looking for. I that's know, I guess we're thinking, we're processing here. Oh, you are? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you would all fall asleep on me. <laughs> no, it's, it's a lot to bite off all of a sudden. Yeah. Well, I have been jotting down some notes if it's okay, helpful. Okay, why don't you give those to us? Uh, so I, I heard folks talk about um, that, you know, members talk about that if it uh, makes sense for the tree warden and for the town to have trees located on the so on the cemetery, um, that that would be the ideal situation and for the applicant to pay for the, the planting themselves. Uh, well, how do folks feel about that? On town property. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good, okay. Uh, another suggestion would would be to provide uh, dra uh, drapery or blinds for all uh, windows. I don't know if that. Already is. He said yeah. they are. Yeah, mm -hmm. they they already are. So, you, so that maybe would be a suggestion for a condition of the for the planning board. It's already uh, in the plan. I just oh, yeah. Um, Kyle said they are slant on that that if they could be shades i feel like that would be much cleaner um i think i think i harped on this the last project too oh, okay okay um, you're a shade the, person <laughs> what's well, the drapes yeah yeah I, oh, yeah that's yeah. okay All right. okay okay and then um let's see here um to uh, make it can uh, recommend that the planning board make a condition that the uh, boulder art feature as proposed um, is to be installed Remain. and maintained. Yeah. Um, this the Alaskan cedar um, uh, shall be a, uh, remain in good visible appearance for the life of the project. If you can do that, that would be good because that's a major for me. If we're going to have this building and it's not going to be red brick, uh, it's going to be something else. I really. I would like to see how far we can get with having some assurance that it will, its appearance will remain. Um, um, so just say, uh, oh sure. Yeah. Uh, suggest a different variety of plant species uh, located on the west side of the building, which is uh, along East Pleasant Street. Yeah, I think there was some concern that it wouldn't match with the, uh, somebody mentioned that we would want that, probably want it to match with the overall Amherst plan for plantings in there. Although I think we fa favored maple trees, so. Well, shade trees. Shade trees, And, yeah. and Maureen, that maybe that, there's some language that defers to Tree Warden. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Tree, yep, Tree Warden, okay. Uh, I didn't jot down, I, I'll have to now start um at the top here um so those were the specific items um did folks um there was a discussion about the building stepping back um the building height um from the front is that a something that the as the board uh, wants to comment on or no i don't know that we i i don't think that is a realistic ex expectation at this point. Yeah. Uh, I'm only speaking because I voiced that concern. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that some acknowledgement of the kind of general uh, remaining concern about the north facade should be addressed in our in our notes. Um, yeah. And maybe it's a matter of of trees, I, you know, I, I heard Pam's comment about not wanting to rely solely on on shielding um, of landscape for for dealing with architectural matters. Um, my ultimate guess, and again, it's it's not totally fair to say this because we don't know what's going to come, but it makes sense to assume that our, you know, the next development is going to make that north facade much less visible and right. i think that if i were looking at this um the design of the north facade from that kind of like future standpoint i would imagine that the way that you know the architectural moves that have been made to kind of peel away at the on the um the street side 
uh, were done so strategically because that's probably the portion of the building that may be more visible once that development occurs on the okay. north side. So I have less concern about it from a long-term standpoint, but I also know that, you know, from a resident of Amherst perspective, that's not really a fair response because that project isn't, that future project isn't happening now. Um, so I think we, we do need to find a way to toe that line of making a recommendation that something is done now to try to soften that facade um, without expecting it to be redesigned um, in some kind of overhaul way. So are you thinking, I'm going through everyone's notes and seeing different versions of this topic. Some members say soften it with uh, trees along the north side. I've seen some members say um, um, play with the building skin. Um, I don't really know what that means specifically other than maybe adding uh, uh, more zinc cladding. Um, so do you uh, as a board have specific recommendations of how to soften that building facade? I don't think we need to list specific ideas. I think we just need to make that concern evident to the planning board um, and understand that they're being very cagey about 15 East Pleasant plans because they probably plan to fill in as densely as possible there. And I think if we allow variance and setbacks on this building, it's going to happen again at 15. And so, yes, it will change the view from the north and it won't look as monolithic on this building, but then there's going to be another one that they're building um, right next to it. So, you know, we're, we're setting precedents and the planning board has set a lot of precedents that we're now dealing with the fallout in. And we just need to keep this in mind. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, some members talked about the rare setback and the distance. Uh, does the board want to weigh in on that and provide recommendations to the planning board? You mean to uh, increase the uh, from the cemetery to 20, 10 to 20 feet? Is that what you're talking about? Correct. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. They may have a strong feeling about that. Well, you know, I do. Is anybody yeah. agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I share that same concern. Uh, I don't know that the planning board will take it up seriously, but. Um, well, eventually they have to listen to us. They haven't paid any attention to a lot of other buildings that we've made recommendations on. Sooner or later, you would think that we exist for a reason. Okay, so am, am I hearing that the board wants to make this recommendation or not? I don't know if I'm ready for a recommendation. I mean, I too would like to see a, a greater setback um, on the, the rear side of the building, but recognize that that would result in the loss of, what, 10 units and um, that that might ten kill the- feet. 10 feet, not necessarily 10 units, right? Well, the, the, the addition of 10 feet to the setback then shortens the building, right? And so that- right. But maybe that instead of a two bedroom, it's a one or, you know. Right. And so that affects, it affects five floors. It affects five of the corridor. Sure. I was multiplying out. So um, it might not be a total of 10 in the end, but we can imagine. So I just, I'm concerned that it, um, it might kill the project if we were to demand that. Um, they I think, did up the number of units considerably since the last design. But and reduce the number of tenants. Right. I mean, I think you know one of the questions is when you're standing in the um, you know you're standing in the cemetery, and there's a new line of trees, whether those are built on either side of the fence. Ten feet is not that much, from a visual perspective. When you're 40, 50, 80, 100 feet away, that distance is so small. Um, and that's that's why I'm not voicing an opinion about it because I agree it would be respectful to give that space to the cemetery. But in terms of when you're standing in that cemetery at a certain but, you're, distance, but Tom, you're not 40, 50, 80 feet. You're five feet. I mean, the, the graves well, go right up to the fence. If you're right. looking at those graves, you are right on the property line. Yeah, but I mean, that's why the tree line is there and there's already buildings there now. And, you know, I guess- Yeah, but they're, they're not five, they're not five stories high. 
they're not going to be looming over you know but you, you can't see up because the trees are there so the the perspective of that is different when i i, I mean I, i'm agreeing with you but i'm saying that i think from a, from a certain perspective that 10 feet is not that it's not going to have the kind of impact that i think um that we would want to derail the project because of and i guess that's where that's my position okay i'm just more concerned in terms of setting a precedent and retaining the few trees that might survive if the setback um, variants weren't allowed yes do other members have comments about this i um i hear jan about the precedent and i think we have to be careful of that then um at the same time i I think that you know there has been an effort made to create some shielding um, and separation that's that's showing a certain amount of respect to the the um, cemetery. I would be inclined to accept that for for this project um, and keep in mind that you know we need to look at it critically again if it if it surfaces for the next one. Um, that's where I stand. Yeah, and I think Jen, the 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 issue that's going to come up is about whether or not we want to um, accept the legal argument that this is a rebuild of an existing site. So I think there the other conditions that are at work are are more, from a planning board perspective are more in terms of our acceptance of a legal argument, and I think there's going to be a lot of debate about that rather than necessarily the nuance of the number, whether it's 10, 15, or 20. I think it's about the legality and, and the approval of that waiver for that particular site. Okay, well, you know, maybe we can just say it to them so that Archipelago knows when they come with a, to us with 15 East Pleasant that there isn't a precedent of a previous building that close, and we're very critical of this now. Yeah, I mean, I do think that the, the non-conforming existing building kind of makes this one possible and gives us an argument for not doing it in the future. Okay. Uh, Kyle, did you still uh, have something to say? No. Okay, cool. All right, so we'll move on. So I'm going to delete that as a suggestion and we'll move on. A uh, member did uh, su um, suggested as a recommendation um, that the applicant provide a photometric plan um, that indicates the uh, light levels um, of all the proposed exterior lighting. Is that something that the board wants to recommend or? Well, we should have one, shouldn't we? Uh, yeah, I think we should. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah we've, we've got to submit that for the planning board. Yeah. Um, so we'll as, as the previous yeah. comments made, I mean, we've got to meet down lighting. You've seen other projects we've done that are not too bright. The concern was, are they bright enough? That's a building code issue we have to satisfy. Um, so um, hopefully we could bring the photometric plan as required to the planning board. Okay. Um, uh, uh, give me a moment as I'm just sort of scrolling through my notes here. Okay, hold on. Okay. And it appears that is all that I have. So to recap, uh, we, the suggestions are for the applicant to provide, uh, based on recommendations of the tree warden, the applicant shall provide uh, in, uh, plant and maintain um, trees on the cemetery side and for them to, the applicant to pay for that installation, provide shades for all windows, uh, suggests a uh, different variety wait, of plants. Wait, 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 wait. What did you say that archipelago would plant and maintain trees on the cemetery side? No, uh, the town would do it, but they would help defray the expense. Oh, they belong oh. to the town. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank, you. thank you, Jan. I think that's clean and and yeah, we we pay for it and executed by the town. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. And let's see here. Provide shades for all windows. Uh, provide a variety of plant species on the west side that matches uh, the town's uh, streetscape 
planting scheme um, in coordination with the tree warden. Um, install and maintain the border art feature as proposed on the submitted site plan. Um, ensure that the Alaskan uh, cedar uh, be in good visible uh, appearance for the life of the project and to soften um, the appearance of the north building facade. And lastly, to uh, submit a photometric plan for the planning board's review. Okay. Yeah. I would not totally delete our comments about setbacks. I might just say that the, it was a topic of a long discussion and that we are still concerned and would like the planning board to look more carefully in the future at proposals that um, that we maintain setbacks, you know, as the town has decreed or something. I don't know how you want to put it, but Jen, I can also voice that opinion as a rep from the from the uh, great. It doesn't, you know, without it being in writing, I can express that. I have other notes too about comments that were made if, if there are questions about that from the board. So I'll, I'll okay. be sure to. I guess I just want us on record because, you know, the public's looking at our minutes and I want to make sure that they understand that we did discuss this and we were concerned. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And um, speaking of that, I think my comments about the size of the plaza in front of the building um, were also response to things we heard from the public. And so I don't know how the rest of the, the board feels about um, that interest that I have and others share about expanding that, uh, the plaza size. Um, to we also them. don't have anything um, in our comments about the positive things that were said by everyone about the building, you know, and I think that should balance. Yes, it should also be in there. I would add what Erica said about the plaza, but I would also pull from a lot of the, the nice things that were said. Um, you know, so that the planning board knows what we do like about the building and not leave it all up to Tom. Right. Yeah. And so uh, getting back to the um, Erica's comment about um, expanding the front plaza, is that something um, that you would like listed as a, a specific suggestion or is that sort of a side note? What, is, what does that mean? I'd like to see it's equal with anything else. Okay, so I'll, I'll include that with the suggestions, expand yeah. the front plaza. So I just have one uh, concern because now I'm on this thing about the siding. Uh, it's very nice to put this in now, but um, when this building changes hands, there's no guarantee that the new owners are gonna pay any attention to the siding. So I think we're sort of trying to help ourselves feel good about this, but long range, um, you know, it's gonna, that siding is gonna do what it's gonna do. And it may be beautiful and it may not, but uh, longevity and what we're, we're recommending um, is probably uh, questionable, but I still wanna put it in there. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Anything else that we should put, uh, add to this. Uh, can you go through Maureen and pull out some of the co positive comments when you write up our recommendations? Sure, maybe, yeah. Maybe absolutely. Erica, you could email her some of the things you clearly wrote down. The rest of us were just talking off the top of our head, but they were nicely articulated. Yeah. Yeah. Especially one of my notes is saying, ask Erica for her notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she definitely hit the... Uh... <laughs> And Lindsay, if you can write down anything that you said too, yeah. Well, both you and Tom. I mean, you 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 have more architectural pizzazz than I do. I'm a historian, not an architect. So, and I'm just a person who checks the uh, blinds as I drive by. So, uh, very important. You know, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I definitely would. I'll send you a couple of comments. I, I I I'm all about landscaping. I admire what they've done. I like the fact they're covering the windows. Uh, mm -hmm. those two would come from me, I guess. So. Okay, well, so if there isn't any um, other suggestions or comments to provide regarding um, this application, is the board ready to make a motion and, and yes. vote? Yes. Wait, uh, Jan, <laughs> do you think you could? Let Tom make this motion. Also. All right, Tom. 
Um, we are going to move to approve or recommend the approval of this project to the planning board with the um, comments and recommendations noted by Maureen um, at the uh, end of this meeting. Okay, very good. Is there a second? second. Okay, second. moved and seconded. I'll do a little roll call. Uh, Erica? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, Jan? Yes. Tom? Yes. yes. Lindsay? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Okay. Did I leave anybody out? All right. Okay. I think that takes care of our major agenda item today. Um, and Maureen, should we put the minutes uh, on another agenda? Or yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. I like to put them on the agenda just so we don't forget, yeah, even right. if they're not prepared. Just... That's right. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah. And is okay. there any other business? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, well. Let's see here. So according to the agenda. Um, General comments from the public. Which are for um, items not right. listed on tonight's agenda. Yes, yes. So if anyone from the public has a comment on items, again, not listed on this agenda, they can use their raise their hand um, feature. Okay. I'm see seeing anybody? no hands. All right. And there, I don't have any other business okay. not anticipated within 48 hours. So it looks like there's just one oh, more motion. Uh, all right. Well, do I, I hear? I move for your turn. <laughs> all right. Is there a second? <laughs> to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Uh, second. Second. Okay. Second. All right. Moved and second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. aye. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thank everybody for yeoman work. Thank you, Carl and David, Kyle and David and- uh, Everybody go pour a drink. Right. <laughs> I appreciate everybody's time very much. Thank you All for right. considering this. Okay. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>